In this video, I'm going to talk more about volume conduction. First, I will describe what are the predicted patterns of results if your synchronization is actually determined by a volume conduction artifact. And then I will describe a couple of different analysis approaches, I think there might be 10 of them, that will minimize the possibility or prevent volume conduction artifacts from happening. Some of these are preventative measures and some of these are post hoc measures that you can inspect your data to see if volume conduction might be accounting for your connectivity results. Okay, but let's start with the predicted pattern. So here's the thing. If you compute synchronization between two electrodes and your synchronization is actually due to volume conduction, not true synchronization between spatially distinct neural populations, but instead your results are attributable to a single source in the brain that is simultaneously projecting to both electrodes, then you can expect that the following four patterns of results will occur. First, we will, you will expect to see zero or pi phase lag, and it's zero or pi phase lag because volume conduction is instantaneous. Volume conduction is instantaneous because electrical fields travel through the brain and through uh, the skull and through skin and so forth, basically instantaneously. It is in fact slightly more complicated than that because it's not totally instantaneous, like the, you know, the, the electrons are moving at the speed of light, of course, but the, the distance that they travel through is different and it depends a bit on the medium, it depends on the frequency and so on. But even if there are tiny, tiny delays between the electrical potential getting to this electrode and the potential getting to this electrode, that is a totally theoretical uh, concept because those delays are much, much, much smaller than what we measure with our recording system. So for all intents and purposes, volume conduction is instantaneous. The electrical activity from this source reaches all electrodes at exactly the same time. So therefore the synchronization will be zero phase lag or can be pi phase lag if like this electrode and this electrode are on the opposite sides of the dipole. If that's not totally clear, I'm going to explain it in a bit more detail in a later video. But anyway, the point is if your synchronization is spurious because of volume conduction, you can expect the phase synchronization to be at zero or pi phase lag. Another prediction from the volume conduction artifact is that you get decreasing synchronization strength with increasing distance. So for example, if you would compute synchronization between this electrode and all other electrodes, so bivariate synchronization between this guy and this guy, this guy and this guy, this guy and this guy, this guy, and every other possible pair of electrodes related to this one electrode, and then you made a topographical map of the synchronization strength, it would look something like this. The synchronization strength gets weaker the further away you get from the seed electrode. And you will see examples of this later on in this section. Another thing you can expect is all positive correlation. So for the same reason that you have a zero or pi phase lag synchronization, you would expect that if the synchronization between these two electrodes is actually reflecting the same source, then of course these guys would be positively correlated with each other. These two electrodes are not going to have a negative synchronization value if they are measuring the same thing. Now it can get a little bit tricky to make this claim because if you're on two different sides of the dipole, then the ions are basically flowing into the neurons over here, they're flowing out of the neurons over here. So the uh, correlation is still going to be very strong, but negative in the time domain. But the thing is, in the frequency domain and in the time frequency domain, you're never going to see negative correlations, for example, with time frequency power, you will never see negative correlations for volume conducted signals. Okay, and then the final pattern of results that you can expect if your synchronization results are spurious and due to volume conduction is that the synchronization, for example, phase synchronization and power at the same frequency will look basically the same. So 
In fact, this is an example where we can confirm, we can look at the data and confirm that this synchronization result between two electrodes is actually not due to volume connection. This is true synchronization. And that is because, for the same reason that I mentioned here and here, if two electrodes are synchronized because of an uh, artifact from volume conduction, then the power at these two electrodes will also look really similar to each other, and they will look like the synchronization between them. So you would expect that the power and the synchronization overall look really similar, certainly at the same frequency, if you have a volume conduction artifact. Okay, so these are some of the things you can expect, some of the patterns you can expect in your results if your synchronization is actually due to an artifact of volume conduction. So now I'd like to discuss what are some strategies that you can use to mitigate the volume conduction artifacts. It looks like, okay, I'm slightly embarrassed about this, but there are in fact 10 here. This goes one through five, and this goes five through nine. So my apologies for the, uh, apparently um, I'm not very good at counting. Next time, I'm going to use MATLAB to do the counting instead of my own brain. Anyway, uh, so, so these are some different strategies you can use to mitigate volume conduction artifacts. If, so I'm going to just walk through all of these very quickly. If some of these are not clear, I'm going to talk about, uh, I think, almost all of these in the rest of this section and possibly in the next section. So one thing you can do is apply a spatial filter that will attenuate volume conduction artifacts before you even do your connectivity analyses. I am going to talk about the Laplacian as a spatial filter for uh, synchronization analyses in this section of the course. And let's see, this one, generalized eigen decomposition, I talk about more in a different course on dimension reduction and source separation. So there are many spatial filters, that are at least several different spatial filters that you can use to try to account for and overcome the possibility of a volume connection artifact. And here I'm going to be talking about the Laplacian. Okay, another possibility is look for negative correlations in power time series. You can look for uh, temporal lags and test to see whether the temporal lags are different from zero or pi which is similar to number six, except this is more about using inferential statistics, and this is more about designing your tests to uh, look for temporal lags in the data. You can focus on condition differences, because, for example, if the time frequency power between two electrodes is similar between two conditions, but the synchronization is different between the conditions, then the synchronization cannot be attributed to power, and power would also be uh, could also be due to volume conduction. You can also examine cross-frequency interaction, so cross-frequency coupling. You can test for a dissociation of power and synchronization, so that's also related to number four, and I also mentioned this in the previous slide. You can statistically test the phase lag to see if it is significantly different from zero or pi. You can use phase lag-based measures instead of phase clustering-based synchronization measures. I will talk quite a bit about phase lag versus phase clustering measures later on in this section. You can compute uh, partial correlations, so this would be appropriate for power time series. Essentially, you are partialing out the variance due to a third electrode when you are measuring the correlations between two electrodes. And the idea is that volume conduction will also be shared with that third electrode. And by partialing out those correlations, you will remove the volume conduction component of the signal, of the correlations. And another strategy is that there are methods to remove the real part of the time series. And that basically allows you to focus on the imaginary part of the time series, which cannot be attributed to volume conduction. This is for the same reason that you would look for temporal lags uh, or phase lag based measures. Again, I will talk more about this issue of phase lag and zero versus or zero or pi phase lag reflecting volume conduction in a later video in this course. All right, so I, I hope you're not too dissuaded after the previous video and this video about doing connectivity analyses or synchronization analyses. Synchronization analyses of, of EEG or electrophysiology data can be really powerful and really insightful. 
They're not really hard to do per se, but you do have to keep more things in mind as I've discussed in this and the previous video. So that's why I wanted to open this section of the course with a little bit of a warning that interpreting synchronization results is a little bit trickier than interpreting other kinds of analyses that you are applying to your electrophysiology data like spectral analyses and time frequency power and phase clustering and so on. Anyway, so with all of this out of the way, let's move to the next video where I'm going to start introducing you to intuition and then the math behind phase synchronization.